Okay, so quick overview where we're at with global investment volumes across the three global regions. The dark line is Asia Pac, the blue line is the Americas, dark blue line is EMEA. So we've had a bit of a bounce back last year, although a lot of the deals that drove that volume were entity level deals, lots of M&A activity. If you take those out, the market's dropping down a bit. And as the market's peaking, hotels tend to come to the fore. If we look at investment by sector, this is hotels in the top. So there's not much change in terms of how much investment's going into the hotel sector relative to all the others. It's about 7% of the market. The big grower last year was the industrial sector. So quite a big shift in terms of money going into it, which again is kind of viewed as one of the alternatives alongside hotels. And then if we look at dry powder, global dry powder, what's quite interesting, is this the amount of capital globally within real estate funds? There's a lot of money in opportunistic, in value add, and debt. There's very little money left in core and core plus. So that means that the capital that's out there is looking for high yielding products, which should suit the hotel sector quite well as money starts moving into alternatives. And I think that's hopefully going to be an interesting thing for the market in the year ahead. I think CE panel earlier said hotel investment volumes in that region had doubled um, in the last year. So there's definitely a lot of money moving into the hotel hospitality sector. Okay, and another interesting trend is the distribution of capital across the European markets. The big three, UK, Germany and France, only accounted for 58% last year. It's typically, as average, is closer to 70, which tells you how money is moving away from some of the big markets and it's distributing across lots of other countries. Okay, so that's the investor side. The economic side is, we do have strong economic growth pretty much everywhere at the minute, across Europe, in the Americas, in Asia. But what's interesting is you look at the growth curve of China, catching up with America, lots of the other big European markets growing much more slowly. And this, or these two factors, definitely have an influence on tourism arrivals. So who's driving tourism arrivals? And that rapid growth in China is reflected in the number of visitors and the amount that they're spending as tourists coming into Europe and going into other global locations. And that's got implications for the types of hotels and you know, who's going to be driving demand for hotels. If we look at the different countries across Europe, what this chart shows is the amount of arrivals in booked accommodation, so staying in hotels and other forms of hotel accommodation. Germany, so hotels dark blue, pale blue, there's other types of accommodation. Germany is way ahead. Yeah. Then you've got France, then you've got Spain, Italy, UK. And then for these guys, which are much smaller, I tried to extend it because otherwise they're kind of off the scale. But you've got a, five big markets where a lot of the demand is in terms of tourism arrivals. And that's both tourists and the business side of things. But what's interesting is if you look at that a number of arrivals in booked accommodation and then you compare it to the, the sort of competitiveness index score, which is something that's produced globally, um, this line should represent, this competitiveness score looks at the total number of arrivals in a market as much as many other factors, quality of the airport infrastructure, etc, etc. But all of these markets should be closer to this line to reflect the number of arrivals going in there. So to me, is that a big opportunity for all of these markets to develop more hotels? Or when people are going into those markets, is this gap being created by the kind of grey accommodation sector, by Airbnb? infiltrating the market. So to what extent is this an opportunity or to what extent are things like Airbnb damaging the hotel industry? Pardon me, what's the commentary in Spain really is outlined? Well, what this seems to suggest is that they've got a lot of good quality hotel accommodation and that's pretty much matching the arrivals that's going into that market, if that makes sense. Whereas these guys have got a lot of arrivals but not as much booked accommodation as they probably should have. That's the kind of simple message from that. Um, and then if we look at hotel investment versus GDP, the big guys are off the chart in terms of how much investment GDP is driving the market. But again, you get quite an interesting story around what the different markets look like in terms of the average investment that's going into those markets relative to their economic output. 
So again, you see you know, Sweden's up here, Ireland, Greece, strong destinations, and a lot of investments gone into those markets. These guys down the bottom, not quite as much. So to what extent can they start moving out? A lot of it is going to be driven by arrivals. So globally, tourism growth is expected to jump by 7% this year, which is a pretty strong level of growth in demand. And then if we look across Europe, it's quite a different story depending on which sub-region you're in. So Southern Mediterranean, North Africa, expected to grow by 13% this year. Europe on average is 8, Western Europe 7, Middle East 5, CE only 4%. So again, where that tourism arrival is set to go is more distributed around the Mediterranean, essentially, rather than into some of the <coughs> other markets. And I think the other key factors are, obviously, you know, the big change in the amount of Asian tourists coming into Europe. And you see that everywhere, every city now, there's a lot more Asian tourists. You might wonder what this one is. There's a lot of people hitting the retirement age. 20,000 people a day are retiring, and that's good. 20,000 people a day in Europe. That's a big number, and they represent a lot of wealth. So, to what extent are we catering to this part of the market as much as this part of the market in terms of driving the right type of hotel accommodation?